Welcome back to my recession ready portfolio. We've had a lot of stuff go on the past week or two. So we're going to recap uh, some changes to my account. We sold some things. We bought some things. We're going to do a balance update. I'm going to show you guys how my portfolio responded to yesterday's 400 plus point drop. Uh, dividend aristocrats have been updated for this year. We're going to go over what I've added, what I've removed. And also just warnings moving forward with the market, just kind of cautionary tales I'm going to point out for everybody. Again, if you do like this video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. And with that, we're going to jump right into it. So our balance update, we're getting closer to that $4,000 mark, uh, $3,881 now. Overall gain uh, up to 175, about 44 of that's dividends. Um, really gonna be excited to see what next month brings. The value's really starting to crank up. Our overall return, it actually did touch 11% at some point last week. Very, very happy with the way this is going. Uh, again, for those who are new to the channel, my portfolio is broken out. It's a 40% uh, bond, 30% real estate. I've got 25% stocks and 5% that's just treasury uh, backed funds there. In the stocks, it is heavily a dividend aristocrat fund. It is broken apart by all of these sectors that comprise the dividend aristocrats. I have removed just recently the energy sector completely because it's mostly just crude oil, um, gas companies, and when I'm investing, I'm I'm looking to change some of my, uh, not so much change my views. It's just what's going to be around 30 years from now. What's more likely to happen? That the gas and oil companies are going to be shrinking while renewable energy, solar, whether it even be uh, gas, wind, that's going to become a bigger sector. So I don't see any real growth in that sector. For me, it's not worth holding on to. So I just got rid of that entire sector completely. So let's jump back to just this past week. The stocks alone um, market's been beat up a little bit, but I want to show you how my diversification across everything, how everything acted when that dip happened. And this is why I like my collection of funds here. The way that it's weighted, we had you know, the market drop in the past week. And if we look just to the 27th, this was the closing for Monday. So if we look at the 24th on that Friday, uh, we'll just round this up to 40. So I deposit $20 every day. So we were up uh, the $10, but out of that $20 deposit, we actually went down 10. So in a day where the market dropped over a percent, almost 2%, down 400 points for the Dow, my portfolio with the way everything is set up, dropped 0.25% or in other words, $10. And the very next day, we went up, as you can tell, $31 back, uh, so $20 deposit, back up $11. So it recouped all of the losses from over a 400 point drop. The very next day, it recovered everything and then earned maybe an extra dollar. So it's very, I, I like the waiting because again, when people start getting scared, stocks are really going to plummet hard and fast, but that money needs to move elsewhere. There's a plenty of videos that have just come out recently where cash is, you know, trash. Well, you're not just going to put your money back into a savings account making a fraction of a point of a percent. You're going to move it into bonds. You're going to move it into real estate. You're going to move it into treasuries. So as stocks are dropping, my other holdings generally go up to counteract that drop. So I get a nice, even approach. If I look to my all-time over, um, it's just been a nice, steady rise with some jumps, I mean, very minor dips very minor dip and even yesterday you really can't tell from the scope which is perfect so overall bonds have been doing great real estate i told uh, i did a video about a month or two ago when there was a huge dip in the real estate everybody was pulling their money out and it, they were funneling everything into stocks i said buy real estate now and since then it's gone from 
I think it was down negative 1% to back up to 9%. It was a huge swing there. So I hope whoever caught that jump by watching my videos, you're welcome. Back to, um, let's see what I have. Dividend aristocrats. Let's move over to Seeking Alpha. This report just came out. The dividend aristocrats for 2020, there are some new additions. We have several new additions. Some will see familiar faces. So this is how I've changed my account. You'll see some extra buys and sells coming in. Um, we'll start off with the good. The good is Realty Income, Income Corp and Essex Property Trust. Those are both real estate funds. If we look back at my portfolio, you will see, let's see. Oh, Realty Income Corp, already had it. I've owned it for a very long time. Next one, Essex Property Trust. Again, I've had it for a very long time. It fits with the overall strategy, dividend aristocrats. Welcome aboard you two funds, but I already had you. So great, didn't have to do anything to it. They're now just part of the club. Um, the two other ones that I did update and add into my account are in the materials sector. Just, I didn't have a lot of diversification in the materials sector, so I wanted to add them in. So the AM, CR ticker and the ALB tickers. If we go back in to the fund here, we'll drop into stocks, we'll get into materials, and you'll see these two new additions are here. So I will finally have more than just one, two, three, four, five, six holdings. We'll now bump that up to eight holdings. And Nucor has really taken a beating these. Uh, in the past month or so, down 17%. But this is why you want to stay diversified. Overall, if you have a lot more winners, you weight them all equally, you can have one that totally misses, but everything else just keeps it solid. So we are adding these two, and they will go ahead and purchase themselves. Um, purchase themselves. If I go into, I did have the three cells. This was the energy sector that I removed completely. So I went ahead and I sold that out last uh, last Thursday or Friday, I believe. What was the 24th? Last Friday. So sold those off and went back to uh, automatically refunded the rest of the portfolio accordingly. What else do we have here? So we did the balance update, showed you guys how my account responded to a huge drop in the market yesterday. Uh, we went over the dividend risk credit updates. This is just a warning for everyone who is investing. You're going to see a lot of other um, a lot of other investors have a very small portfolio. They target. This is something that's been scaring me for a while. I actually had a nice conversation with my brother-in-law over the weekend on it. Um, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook. They are 17% of the S&P 500. If one of these stocks has a bad performance, even if you just own the, the S&P 500 ETF, you're gonna drop substantially just from one company. It's not something that I wanna build my entire account around. Yes, they have all made a ton of money in the past few years, but I'm to the point where these are all big names. These are all products that we all own. They're all in our house. So it's very easy for a common investor to pick Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. Those are no brainers. These are things that pretty much everybody uses on a, a weekly basis. So when a first time investor comes in, they're gonna pay any price for any of these stocks because they don't know any better. So. I, for one, I do own a little bit of Apple, a little bit of Microsoft. I do not own Google, Amazon, Facebook. So if we actually go into my portfolio, I'll show you how much I actually have valued in these two companies. So we have Apple and Microsoft for here. They make up $32 out of my entire portfolio. That's less than 1% of my total value in those two companies. I don't want to have all of my money tied up in just these couple companies. If some sort of antitrust hap happens, um, 
they've talked about it with Facebook, they've tried to do it with Microsoft. It could severely damage these stocks and you can lose a lot of money very quickly. So not that I'm against owning them, but you just don't wanna have everything that everyone else has. So here's a breakdown by the biggest market cap. Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, it's all, I mean, look at just the sheer size of the market cap ownership of just these top 10 companies. That's, that's crazy. You know, I wanna be owning companies down in this area because at least they have growth potential. These already are, these are, these are here, they're done. They're already at the top. So I, I don't like with all these easy to use investment pieces, Robinhood, let me round up some change and I'm just gonna buy pennies. These are all set it and forget it type in strategies, which don't get me wrong, that's what I'm doing with my M1 finance portfolio. But I could see a lot of young or early investors not understanding how to stay diversified how to only cherry pick a couple stocks. That's what I did when I started and you're gonna get creamed at some point. You know, you can make a lot of money, you could lose a lot of money, it'll move a lot faster up and down. I much rather see in the, what, seven, seven eight months I've been investing, 10% gain, simple, easy, nice and stable, no big drops. I'm not greedy. I don't want to make 50% in one year and then lose 70% the next year. Slow and steady wins the race. That's why I like all of my dividend aristocrats for my stocks. I like uh, nice paying dividends for my real estates. I like my nice paying bonds and it just keeps compounding, reinvesting and I re reinvest. I deposit $20 every day or every tradable day I should say and just let it let it keep compounding, let it keep building. Now my treasury funds is basically for me, it's my cash equivalent. It's I wanna keep it in the ca account, I wanna keep it making a little bit of money, but if there is a big market dip, then I've got 5% cash. What I'll, when that does happen, I will just sell this entire uh, treasury portion and just sprinkle all that in, that money will just go right into buying. If I don't sell it all outright, what I can do, what I'm doing now, I made some adjustments for the new year for 2020. I reallocated, I put a little bit more money into stocks, pulled 5% out of treasury and spread that 5% across these funds. And it's still incrementally purchasing these uh, three categories over treasuries until that does hit 5%. So you can, to do it immediately, you would, would just hit a rebalance and it would automatically sell this and buy this. That's not what I wanna do. I just wanna let it, the, my $20 a day keep trickling in and just keep buying the average, whether it's up or down, I don't care. I have a bunch of solid companies that are not going anywhere anytime soon that continue to earn me dividend payments which only get recompounded in. So, that is everything in a nutshell for this week. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy the news. Um, there's plenty of other videos talking about the coronavirus. Um, it is what it is. China's locking down some things. We're probably gonna see some manufacturing holdups. Uh, I know Honda has uh, displaced some of their workers in fears of the virus. So we'll probably get more news on this as it goes through. It will have some ripple effects. It will um, continue to cause a little bit of problem as we go. But historically, once SARS, swine flu, coronavirus, not a, I mean, it's a very alcoholic name. I don't know why they named it that. Um, it's pretty funny. Horrible joke I heard today is um, just beware if you do contract the coronavirus, you're highly contagious for Lyme disease. Corona, limes, dad joke, haha. Ha. I didn't make it up, heard it today, figured I'd pass it along. Anyway, that should be all for this episode. Again, if you do like the video, uh, click that uh, thumbs up button, subscribe, and share with your friends. Until next time, keep investing.